I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about SVG animation, responsive web design, charting, and more. Let's check it out. First up is a website called Coolers, or co co Colors? Colors. Colors. I'm, Colors. I'm really not sure how to pronounce it. It's at C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O. So, a lot of O's cool, in there. Cool, cool wars. Yeah. Yeah, I guess color.com was taken. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. But uh, anyway, at this website, you can... I hope that doesn't color your perception of it. You can press the space bar and generate colors. I love how simple this website is. This is actually pretty amazing UX taken by itself. But if you press the space bar, which I am doing right now, you can see that it generates different color schemes. So that's pretty amazing, right? These are all wow. actually coming from users that have generated colors on this site because you can actually register for this and log in and everything like that and actually save your color schemes. But if you're not interested in that, you just kind of want to cycle through here, look at some cool color schemes. When you find one that you really like, you can actually go down here and click on some of these colors to maybe edit them if you want a slightly different color. Or you can lock a color so when you go to cycle through more of them, that color will actually be locked and you can just change some of the others. So really cool site, very simple, not a whole lot to say about it, but if you're looking to generate some color schemes, definitely check this one out. Next up, we have a project called Vivus, or Vivus, and this is for SVG animation. It says it's going to bring your SVGs to life. Now, SVG animation can be a little bit tricky, so this plugin helps to ease the burden. There are three different options for animating the SVGs. This is delayed, where every element is drawn at the same time with a small delay at the start, and then they all sort of finish at the same time. Async, where each line is drawn asynchronously, and once again they all start and finish at the same time, and hence the async method. And then finally, one by one, where all of the different elements are drawn one after the other, producing a very interesting animation. Uh, they have a, another cool animation down here on the page. We'll go ahead and, and show that. I'll um, replay this. If you look to the left right there, you can see a little Polaroid camera being animated. And you can actually rewind this animation and see it multiple times. Now, this does use a little bit of trickery to get the SVG animation to work. Uh, the script uses the CSS property stroke-offset and a little bit of JavaScript to update the value progressively, but this only works on path elements. So if you're using circles, rectangles, lines, or polylines, this may break the animation. So there is a simple workaround on there. Now it's very easy to use. There are no dependencies. So you just call new Vivus. You give it your ID of the SVG, the type of animation that you want from what we talked about earlier. Then you give it the duration that you want in milliseconds and any callbacks. Uh, and that's pretty much all you need to do to get the plugin to work. Um, and at the end, there's also this self-destroy option, which removes all extra styling on the SVG and leaves it as the original. Oh, good. I thought that did something completely different. I'm glad <laughs> you clarified that. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I got your back. Yeah, I, I could see the worry in your face. Anyway, uh, that's about it. There's some more options. Recommend checking it out in the show notes if you're looking to do any SVG animation. Very nice. Well, next up is a wonderful blog post called Nine Basic Principles of Responsive Web Design. Responsive Web Design is, of course, a way to resolve multiple screen resolutions and figure out how your website should look on tablets and desktops and mobile devices and so on. So if you're coming from the print world, this is a really great introduction to responsive web design because it has some really nice animations sort of showing you the difference between 
say, a responsive website and an adaptive website, which the difference is very subtle, but it is indeed different. You'll see that this particular layout is actually flexing very fluidly because it's using a fluid grid, and this one just changes with a media query, and there is no fluid grid, but when the screen size changes, it just sort of snaps. This is actually not the best way to do things. You want to do things responsively because you can never actually predict what the size of even a window might be on a desktop browser, let alone the huge multitude of different uh, screen resolutions on mobile devices. So definitely a good lesson there. There's a whole bunch more stuff here about, say, how to use relative units instead of static units like pixels. So you definitely want to use percentages. It explains what a site looks like with breakpoints and without breakpoints. So say you have a two column layout with breakpoints, it's going to go down to a, a single column flow, uh, which is ideal for a mobile phone. And without breakpoints, you might have that same two column layout, but it's just going to look the same even if you have a fluid grid. So you definitely need those media query breakpoints. Anyway, there's a whole bunch more tips there. So if you are pretty new to making websites and you want to wrap your head around what all this responsive design stuff is, this is a great introductory post. Hmm, very nice. Next up, we have a project called metricsgraphics.js. This is a library built on top of D3 for creating simple charts. Now, they only offer a few charts to start with, line charts, scatter plots, and histograms. And they do this in order to make creating these charts very easy and efficient. Efficient. So here, if you see this little snippet of code, this is all you need to do to make a chart. If we click over on examples here, you can see a bunch of different examples of what this library can be used for. So at the simplest, we have a line chart, and you'll notice as I move the mouse along this chart, the dates and values in the top right are updating. Now the scale on the X and Y coordinates are automatically set, and you can even set this baseline option here. You can see there are options for multi-line charts, just a few observations, as well as annotations inside a chart. You can see at this point right here, we have a spike. Now, there are more layouts available. Uh, it uses Bootstrap's grid template to lay out graphics which means you can create grids of arbitrary sizes and put the graphics anywhere you want to, pretty much. Uh, anyway, tons of different options here. And it also has a very simple API. They get into a little bit about their design philosophy, which wasn't to make absolutely everything, just to make uh, a few different options really efficient and practical. Now, it's pretty easy to get the data, just use the D3 library, and here it is loading some JSON data. Once you do that, you can call this data graphic function, give it a title, a description, link to the data which you just fetched up here in that JSON request, a width and height, a target, and you are pretty much good to go. This little tiny bit of code right here creates this great chart right down here. Anyway, this is a great library to check out. It removes a lot of work from using D3 by itself. That is something we probably should have mentioned at the beginning. D3, of course, is a generic SVG charting library, but it is it's great. very generic. I mean, you can do all sorts of stuff. It has amazing amounts of flexibility, but that also means it's pretty difficult to use on its own if you just want to make some cool looking charts. So it's really nice to use a library like this that's built on top of D3 and takes advantage of all of that power. Pretty cool stuff. Very cool. Well, next up is a really cool website that will help you find the perfect font combo for your next project. I know that because it says it right here. So that's genius. So convenient. So first you select a starter font, and they have a ton of fonts to pick from. You can actually use the search function here. Do they have Comic Sans? Like, they might. Let's see. They have Comic Serif Pro. I think that's the closest we're going to get. So let's let's see what font would pair with Comic Serif Pro. You can click View Matches, and it says, "Hey, this font called Quicksand would pair pretty well with it." So 
if you're going for this kind of a look, you can have a wonderful font that pairs with it. Let's pick another one just to see what this might look like. Let's say we go with uh, Droid Serif here. We'll view the matches. And it says, hey, you should use Montserrat. I think that's how you say that font. But uh, pretty, pretty nice pairing there. I'm actually pretty impressed. And if you click down here, you can actually see some additional options if you don't like maybe the first one. And these, of course, have all been hand selected. So it's pretty much guaranteed that they're going to look nice uh, paired together. I like how it gives you a, a source example there where you can actually see these fonts in action if you like how that looks. And then you can go through and just completely rip off the code. That is terrible advice. But yes, that example is there so you can go ahead and look at it and see what the font might look like in action. So pretty cool website. Definitely be sure to check that one out. I think that's about all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes right below this video. We want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll talk to you next week.